Hi there, Kerry from The Soap Coach here and today I'm going to talk about five things that I would put at the top of my list of priorities for considering if I was going to start a soap or skincare business today from scratch again. Number one would be niche. I'm always talking about niche. I know that it's because I feel it's really important. It's what everything else hangs off of. And if you are making products which you feel would appeal to everybody, they will end up appealing to nobody. Um, so to put that into context, if I'm just making a range, a generic range of soap with quite bland branding, not aimed at a particular group of people, then, then nobody's going to really think that there's a good reason to buy from her instead of somebody else. So niche. The second one would be to restrict the number of products that you make initially. So keep your numbers limited, your range limited. A, it gives you an opportunity to test your niche, niche and to test your concept, um, but also test your branding, everything around it, and see whether you are heading in the right direction. It's also cheaper for you to do it that way, so there's less risk. Uh, number three, and this is a piece of advice I was given right back in the early days, is to Look at where you want to be in five years time and then start as you mean to go on. So to put that in perspective, what that meant for me was I knew that I wanted to be selling online, nationwide, possibly with stockists. So I started out from day one with a good e-commerce website, which was professional and looked the part. So I started with Shopify. So plan for five years time when you first start out. Number four, uh, this is a biggie um, and it's quite relevant at the moment although that wasn't my intention when I planned this so number four is to not have your business rely on one other business um, so that could be for me I said from day one that I was going to use just essential oils because I didn't want to be relying on uh, and restricted to specific fragrance oils and also I wanted to go down the naturals route um, and quite timely because one of our fragrance oil suppliers seems to have gone out of business in the last week and I know it's impacted on a lot of people. That was not in my timeline at the time when I did it but again it, it does put into perspective why not putting all your eggs in one basket is, is a good idea. Does that make sense? You know what I mean. Um, and then for me it was, so I white label in some products from another maker and she's quite a small business like me as well. And I was always very, very concerned that if she decided to stop her business, then my business would collapse. So my dog products. So it's for that reason that I have more than half the products are ones that I make myself. So I know that I will always have something, even if she decides to stop um, making anything. And we have had discussions. I had that discussion with her and she's, very, she's brilliant. I've been working with her for nearly eight years. Um, and she's always says to me that she'll always be doing it, but you never know what's going on in someone else's life. Um, and the other aspect that that can be um, important is not to set your business up so that you are only supplying one large supplier or stockist. So for me, again, to put it into context, I was approached by quite a, a big organisation, big charity organisation here in the UK, but what they wanted would have meant that I had to redesign the way my business ran entirely. It would have taken over my business. That was in 2019. Then in 2020, um, COVID, sorry, yeah, 2020 COVID hit and all the shops shut. So for me, if I'd invested a lot of money being able to set my business up so I could serve this one company, it would have been the end of my business. So my key bit of a takeaway from that was... Don't ever rely on one business to keep your business um, running. And then my last takeaway from day one, start collecting email addresses for your customers. That could be at events. It could be um, if you are sending orders out through Facebook, ask them if you can keep their email address and contact them again. Um, later on down the line, you can do it all properly through email collectors and things like MailerLite, which that's a whole different topic but start collecting emails from day one because that's then your list of customers that you can keep in touch with and make sales from in the future so that's my five takeaways niche reduce your number of products or keep your number of products quite low initially plan for five years time when you're first starting out 
don't rely on one business to run your business for and um, start collecting emails from day one. Okie dokie.